Hi, I'm Marla Peterson. I was diagnosed with stage four de novo breast cancer in 2021. I had a cyst for years and years and years. And I had it checked out and they said I had a mammogram. This was in my early 30s. And they said, yeah, it's just a cyst, don't worry about it. So I didn't worry about it. Years and years go by, the cyst used to change. It would get smaller and shrink and then bigger depending on my cycle. And then early in 2021, um, it stopped shrinking and was growing. And I was getting terrible migraines. Um, and I didn't know why. And that February, my dad passed away. And then in summer of 2021, my sister and I swam the San Francisco Bay swim that raises money for children's cancer. And we swam in honor of my dad. My dad had melanoma when we were little kids and he was fine. Um, so we swam for him. And then it was just a few weeks after that swim, because the swim was end of September. I went in to get a breast exam to check on the cyst. And my doctor sent me to a breast specialist in San Rafael. I was with Kaiser at the time. And she immediately sent me to the floor below and said, you need to get a biopsy done. And you could read her face pretty clearly that this was something of concern. And so I went and had a biopsy. I went by myself because I thought, hmm, we'll just see what's happening with this. I went and got a biopsy and the doctor said, I would be very surprised if this came back and it was not breast cancer. So then I had to drive home now with breast cancer at the age of 40, a few months after my dad passed away and wait those two grueling days until the doctor calls you back with the official results. And the official results were that this cancer had spread and I had stage four cancer and there were spots in my liver, on my spine, and in my lungs. Um, and then I had to sit my mom down who had just lost her husband of over 50 years and tell her now her youngest daughter has stage four cancer. And she just looked at me and said, okay, what do we have to do? And that has been our theme since the beginning. It's just, what do we have to do? We can do this. We're in this together. And, and now I am stage four cancer thriver and I'm NED. I did have an art practice before my cancer diagnosis and I have been making art since I was a little kid. And my parents really fostered that love of art for me. And I was in art enrichment classes and my favorite game as a kid was Pictionary. Um, I did art summer camps. And unfortunately in high school, you have to take one year of art, but then you're so busy with your other classes that often there's no time for more electives. And then I went to college and took an art education intro course and it just was like a light, I'm like this is what I want to do. This is 
this is where I need to be. And I became a teacher because I wanted to be that person to show students that everyone is an artist and we all are unique and have something to say. And we have this tool of expression right at our fingertips. And sometimes there's not words to express what you're feeling or, um, but you can do that through your own style and your own visual um, creations and it's all worth celebrating. And I just wanted to provide a safe space for people to explore that creativity. My art and cancer life came together when I found Art for Recovery at UCSF. So after I was diagnosed, I switched from Kaiser to UCSF and then found the resource for Art for Recovery. And at the time, I was really flailing. I didn't know how to be supported or what I needed. And I, on my own, I couldn't make any art. And I tried other support groups that didn't have an art piece attached and it felt very overwhelming and scary. And then I tried an art for recovery class and it was on Zoom, the meeting. And it was the first time that I really felt grounded and safe to, to share all my vulnerability. And ex I could say exactly what I was feeling and I wouldn't scare anyone in the room by what I was saying. I didn't have to hold back or think, well, if I say this, that might be too much for this person. Or I didn't have to protect anyone in that space. And I could listen to other people and see what they were making and their original art from their story. And having that process of not only talking about our experience, but creating from our experience and moving it through our body into this beautiful piece of art was really inspiring. And a much healthier way to process everything that I was thinking about. Mm -hmm. So I would come I would come in with holding a lot and then it was a place to release it all and leave feeling more supported and held and really loved. So I have an art show um, in Mission Bay's lobby and I made all of that art during that first year, first two years, so after diagnosis and then while I was going through chemo. And it's one thing to make all of that work in your house, by yourself. It was very therapeutic. Um, it was all of my processing being just laid out um, onto canvas. And then, and then I was offered to have the show. And so it became available for everyone to see. And this whole experience has been a practice in um, kind of like breaking myself open and letting people come in and sharing all of it with others. And I mean, really what's better in life than having these rich, meaningful conversations and experiences with other people, whether they're your friends or strangers, um, like to be able to learn from each other and grow 
in this way is, is really meaningful. And I feel like previously I was so good about keeping all my emotions, just pushing them down into my gut. And, you know, everything was always okay. Like, I don't, if I don't speak it and I just carry on and continue with this positive attitude um, and not face what's really going on, um, then it just doesn't exist. You know, I can pretend like I can just ignore, ignore that and carry on, but I think maybe that partly is why I became sick. This was like toxic trauma that I lived with for a long time. And I think that can manifest in ways that we don't understand. Mm -hmm. So now as a parent, I really want to model that we can talk and be open about our feelings and and about everything. The, we can cry, we can laugh, we, you know, there's days you're looking on the bright side and it's okay sometimes if you just can't. Mm -hmm. um, and we're here for you when you need a little help so you can get back to that bright side. I refer to my cancer experience as a revelation. Um, cancer was something, this like unknown thing that was growing in my body for a long time. And once it showed its showed itself, then it revealed to me more about myself that I didn't know was there. Um, it's allowed me to become more vulnerable and open with what I have to say. It's, it's given me the ability to create boundaries in my life um, and really put in perspective how to be in the here and the now and celebrate what we have. It's also revealed to me a community of people that I would have never found on my own and that now I couldn't live without. I have learned about myself that grief and pain and heartbreak and fear always exists and is part of life and isn't something that needs to be stuffed away. It doesn't, and also doesn't need to be dark. I think recognizing those feelings and paying attention to them can then really paint a brilliant picture because you you grab on to the joy and the laughter and the love so much more. So finding that balance of acknowledging both things that, that both coexist and that is really what makes us feel alive. And like, what a gift to have, you know, wake up and put your feet on the ground and have another day to experience all of the feelings. My mantra, I started the first day I went for my first chemo infusion and it was terrifying. I didn't know what to expect. You hear so many stories and people tell you everyone's experience is so different. And so I didn't want to go in and have the medicine being infused in my body and think negative thoughts in that moment. So I repeated, um, 
long, beautiful life over and over and over. And I had a notebook, my journal, and I would just write it and doodle and write it in different fonts. And, and then I would also say, um, accept this medicine and heal my body 100%. And those two phrases were just um, soothing and something that I still repeat to myself. To those who are newly diagnosed, I say be gentle with yourself and listen to yourself and know that you know what you need and when you need it. And when you figure that out, ask for it. And there are so many people that are just waiting to help you. That you're not alone and you're supported and brave and resilient and you can do this. To other people, caregivers, friends that want to show up but don't know how, just show up. Don't ask what we need. Like if someone says, how can I help? What do you need? Often we don't want to say because we don't want to be a burden or it's it can be hard to ask for help. Um, and sometimes you don't even know and you're so overwhelmed with all of the things you're dealing with the, that it's you just want someone to drop off the soup on your doorstep or um, so just do the kind thing like if you could put yourself in someone else's shoes you know what would you want and how, if you were going through this, like, so just, just do the kind, spread the kindness, drop off the meals, bring delivery of flowers once a week, leave little treats on the doorstep, or write a letter, or email, or leave a voicemail, or just be there to listen, offer a shoulder to cry on, um, go for a walk, but telling stories of other people that you know who have had cancer or a family member or that's not helpful. Or, you know, finding research that you've found that's not helpful. Um, just showing up without being asked. And for the medical team, I think treat each of us as unique individuals with a unique diagnosis and no are the same. We're, no one's going to go through it the same way. Maybe similarities of symptoms or side effects, but For newly diagnosed patients, it is traumatizing to hear a timeline placed at your feet. And no one knows that. And it took me a, some time to, to realize I am not that statistic. And while those are in place for a reason, that doesn't mean it's going to apply to any one person. And just take the journey for yourself. Um, and doctors can't predict our how long we have. And we know mortality is in our shadows, but that's something we live with. and don't need to have it be reminded to us. 
aha moments in this experience have been how wise and wonderful and brilliant all of these humans are that are dealing with a life-threatening illness and how they show up so strong and full of life even when they're joining a Zoom call from their hospital bed is amazing. Like We have so much power and so much ability to, to recover from anything that we're dealt. And it's in there. So even on those days when it can be so scary and you, your mind takes you to the future, to a future that is not what you had anticipated or dreamed of, just walk yourself back and live for today and know that the way that you deal with this experience and how you present yourself honestly and as real as possible to those around you that's going to help them when the time comes that you're no longer here. My name is Marla Peterson and I am Art for Recovery. Yay. <laughs>